Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I am a little bit late, so sorry about that, but I just oh, I wanted some coffee, so I went and made me some. I got everything fixed earlier, so I knew that really all I had to do was come get things set up. So, that's what I'm doing now, too. There we go. So I hope y'all had an awesome Tuesday today. I had an awesome one. It was a good day. A good day in the... Well, you know what? My song is not here that I shared. Oh my. That happens a lot. Especially when I don't share it. Hang on a second. I have to go back to my original page. I'm so sorry. But I am not prepared today. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I'm not prepared today. There it is. That's such a beautiful song, too. I gotta get it in there. Okay, come on. Come on, come on. Wow. Goodness, it's been an interesting day, but a good day. Mm. I have to share it to my page, share it to a page. Up in here and share. So sorry. I thought I had all that done. I do that on my phone, but um, I didn't do it today. Should be on there now. I may have to refresh it. Thank you for your patience. Oh, there we are. All right, so, again, I hope you had an awesome day today. Oh, I lost my picture. There we are. All right, I think I'm ready now. I'm so sorry I wasn't ready. I had to go make me some coffee, too. But what I want to talk to you about tonight is Psalm 139, which was my daily reading for today. Psalm 139, God knows us all. Because that those verses are proof that God has known us and knows us. We cannot escape from Him. He knows who we are. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. It's a really good scripture. Okay. So today, I am celebrating... Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And that's a Psalm 2. Psalm 33, 12. So I guess I'm celebrating our nation's birthday. More than one day. Because I didn't have very... I ordered me two shirts that I can wear for these holidays. So I can celebrate. That are Christian t-shirts too. Okay. Well, let's jump into some prayer. My lipstick is very red. I'm not used to red lipstick. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are because you do know us. You know us intimately, God. You know our hearts. You know our minds. You know our thoughts. You know everything, God. You know where we are. You know what we're thinking. You are in control of all God you are the great Jehovah you are the great I am and you are the one that reigns sovereign over all things you are our creator our sustainer our provider our protector our shelter in the storm you are our strength and our refuge and you are so much more God you are magnificent and powerful and mighty and you are kind and loving and compassionate, God. 
You are faithful. You are trustworthy. You are patient. You want none to perish, God. You want everyone to be in heaven with you. Everyone. Jesus died for everyone, and that is what you want. That is your wish, God. But you are also the righteous judge. And you will judge all unrighteousness. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals. We pray for them to come home. We pray for them to return, to repent, and to have their relationship with you reconciled. God, we pray for all these people in Florida, these family members, these um, friends of people that were were present one night and gone the next, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for the government officials, God. We pray for the rescuers, the people, the construction people that are clearing all that out, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them too, God. We pray for all the volunteers. We pray for everyone that has been part of that, God. We just lift them up to you. Pray that you would meet their needs, whatever they are. God, we also pray for the people in Cuba that are asking for liberty, that are wanting freedom, God. We pray. We pray for them to have freedom. God, we do not want a country like that. We pray for all the people in South Africa. They're in an uprise too. We pray for them, God. God, just so much going on all at the same time, God. But we know that you have the whole world in your hands, God, and that we can trust you. We can trust you with everything that we have, God. God, I just pray for people that I know that are sick right now. I just pray that you would heal their bodies, God, that you would be with them. I pray for people that have lost loved ones, that you would be with them, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. I pray, God, that... You would speak through me tonight, God, because I am nothing but a willing vessel for you. And I just pray that someone would come and they, they would need to know this message. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. We are going to get into the lesson now. I was cold. I put this shirt on, on top of this t-shirt, and now I'm having to turn my fan on. I turned the air up because it was really cold in there too. Seth was all wrapped up in the cover that goes on his daddy's chair. He was all wrapped up in that like a blanket, so anyway, okay, well let's get into this lesson. So, um... As I said, today, Psalm 139 was my verse. And so I got to thinking about um, that I heard a song, Psalm 139. And it's called Far Too Wonderful. It is so good. It is so pretty. I suggest you go and listen to it. So this is what I have to say about this song. I love this beautiful song and message by Shane and Shane based on Psalm 139. Today, Psalm 139 was my daily reading on version. God knows us all, and even know, knew us before we were born. We can't hide from Him and can't hide our sin from Him. He is with us always. He loves us always and wants the very best for each and every one of us. He created us, well, that's supposed to say four great things, but it says two. I may have to fix it later. He calls us out of our comfort zones and into his army for his glory. He knows when we rise up each morning and when we go to bed at night. He is forever with us. He wants us to follow his ways through the, ex the example of Jesus. We do have to come into a relationship with him through Jesus. 
Salvation in Jesus is the only way. We talk about that here all the time. There is no other way. People will tell you that there are many other ways, but there absolutely are not any other ways except through Jesus. Um, is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. And be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. He wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Read that and see. 3, 16 and 17 will tell you for sure. I like the uh, 17, 18, 19, well, 18, 19, 20, and 21 because it talks about... Um, does it talk about does it talk about corruption it talks about different things call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today we may read it today because I'm not sure okay so that is what I wrote uh, for my Facebook share which I do that pretty much every day sometimes I don't have time Sometimes I have to get out of the house quicker, so sometimes I don't have time. Sorry. Okay. So let's get the Bible out and let's read some scriptures. John 3.16 too. Also, well, I need to turn my Bible right side up. <laughs> my lipstick is very bright. It's not too bright on the YouTube side. On the Facebook side, it's kind of like neon bright. Okay, Psalm 139. Let's read it first because this is what I read today. And it really gave me the moment of just thinking, you know, deeply about this. Let me get a drink of coffee. I miss the straw. Oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. God knows us. He has searched us and he knows us. Thou knowest my down-sitting. He knows that I'm sitting down right now. And my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. He knows our thoughts. He knows our thoughts. So let's keep them clean. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. And art equated, art equated with, acquainted with all my ways. He knows everything. There is absolutely nothing that we can hide from God. He knows everything. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is omnipotent. I can't remember what omnipotent means right now. Hmm. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll let you know when I figure it out. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. He knows everything that we say. He knows everything. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. So he is before us, he is behind us. And he lays his hand upon us. This is a Psalm of David. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. So the fact that God knows all these things about him is just too high. And it is. It is, it is astounding to think that God knows all these things about us. That nothing, 
not a thing is hidden from him. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? We can't. We can't flee from God. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. He is everywhere. God is everywhere. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. He's, he's everywhere. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. So God is going to send light into our darkness. He's going to send light into it. If we're walking with him, our darkness is going to have light. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. See, God knew us before we were born. He knew us before we were in our mother's wombs. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Yes, our souls, they are so connected with God because he created us. He is our creator. My substance was not hid from me when I was made in secret. When we were made in secret, God knew and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. So even when we were not perfectly formed in our mother's womb, God was there. And he, he continually fashioned us. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. You know, God's thoughts for us are not what we think in our minds. We think that God is looking down at us and going, Ah, oh, why did I create that one? She doesn't do what I ask her to do. She's always doing the opposite of what I ask her to do. That is not God's heart. God looks on us with love. He treasures us. To Him, we are so wonderful. He created us. And He loves us. Like, we can't even imagine how much He loves us. Him sending His Son to die for us to save our souls is just a small part of how much He loves us. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with Thee. Surely Thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. I see that. You know, I see the way that people speak about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And you know what? It hurts my spirit, because I know that it hurts them too. And um, I don't like it. David, David here says that he hates them. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. So when Jesus came, Jesus told us to love our enemies to love everyone so this may just be something more 
back in the Old Testament and not with the New Covenant with Jesus. So search me, O God, and know my heart. Trust me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. So that's what I read today. And it really impacted me today. God knows us. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows our thoughts. He knows what words we're saying. He knows if what we are doing is pleasing towards Him. He knows whether we're sinning or whether we're not sinning. You know, He knows we can't hide anything from Him. He knew us before we were born. He created us for this day. He created us for this time. He created us to be His children. But He also gave us free will. He gave every one of us free will. To choose. To choose either Jesus, to accept Jesus, His Son, as our Savior, or not to accept Jesus, His Son, as our Savior. It's our choice. We choose. Sometimes we choose badly. And there are consequences for that. God will deal with all unrighteousness. He will. He will be swift. He is the judge over all that cannot be bought, cannot be compromised, and cannot be threatened. So, it's time, if people aren't saved, for them to get saved. Because time is running out. And when he exacts his judgment over all unrighteousness, it is going to be worse than any movie that you have ever watched about the end times. It's going to be so much worse. Okay, well, let's move on. I felt led to say that. Oh, I wrote down Psalm 3312. And because Psalm 3312 was part of my reading, my other reading that I do, my uh, Jesus Always reading that I do. But I'm not going to read that, but one of the verses really I uh, felt like went with um, Psalm 139. So let's read Psalm 25.4, and we will read Psalm 33.12. Psalm 25. Can't get on the right page. 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. This is a Psalm of David too. So David was a man after God's own heart, but David, David made many mistakes. But he loves God. I'm not going to say loved because we still love in heaven. Love doesn't end. Love never ends. So when your loved one goes to heaven, there is still love. You can still love them. You don't have to go, I sure did love them. Well, you sure continue loving them. Okay. So let's read Psalm 32.8. Psalm 32.8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. So God is going to instruct us and teach us in the way which we should go. Okay. Um, let's read Psalm 33, 12, which is on the same page. Oh, my t-shirt. 
Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. See again, God can see everything. He hears everything. He is everywhere at the same time. There is nothing that is happening this second somewhere in the world that God does not know about. There are probably many things happening right now this second in the world that God is so aware of. He is so aware. And He knows us, too. He knows us all. He knows us all. He loves us all. He wants good things for us all. But the, the most that God wants for us is to accept His Son as our Savior. How am I going to share this tonight? I guess we'll do it. Oh, I just threw that on the floor, so I guess we won't do it that way. So I'll have to get up and get it. Let's do this one. I have all these um, covered up right now. Okay. I like this one. Between you and God. It used to have a little foldy out thing, but I don't know where it is. Alright, so this is a picture. The top picture on the left well, I guess it would be your right. Anyway, the picture at the top. The picture at the top. There's a picture of man and God. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like the one eye thing. It's a picture of man and God. I hope you can all see it. And it says, Our sin separates us from God. So the light on the right represents God. The light represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving and has provided a way for salvation. He has. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin. Separated from God, sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions. But a heart that is inclined, to, inclined towards evil. Jeremiah 17, 9. The Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Apart from God's grace, man is without hope. So, apart from God's grace, we have no hope. And then the next picture is Jesus on the cross. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 and 1 Peter 3.18 The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 there is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. So then we have these next pictures, starting over here with the tomb. So Jesus died for us, and they put him in a tomb that wasn't even his. 
It, be, it uh, belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. It was his tomb. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. So Jesus is risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. And then we have Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty God demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, God, except through me, John 14, 6. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life. So this is the next part. Trust only in Jesus. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all, to all who believe. Romans 3.22 Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? You can. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10.9 If you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. Dear God, Thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So again, remember, it's not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10:27 and 28, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you should follow God and learn to please Him. Here are some of His requirements for you to grow spiritually. So here are some of the symbols that we're going to talk about real quick. So the heart is love God and all people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the great and foremost commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer 
In supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Study the Bible, God's Word, daily. Start with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the Word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2. Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking our own assemblings together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10.25 Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16.15 So if you accepted Jesus as your Savior tonight, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son. And I talk about the rapture a lot, so be ready to go when it comes. All right, we already read that, and we read all of these. So I believe it's time to give you God's blessing to pray and bid you good night. I've got to go and feed my child. It's time to feed him. Okay, number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Oh, I pray for peace. I pray for peace in our nation. I pray for our nation to be one nation under God once again. Those are my prayers. So many other prayers, too. Those are my prayers. All right, let us pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you do know us all. You know every one of us, God. You know us all. God, we just pray, we pray that you would um, help us, help us to be bolder, to go and speak your truths, God, and to speak the gospel of Jesus, which is the good news. We should just be hard to hold back on sharing such great news. The people don't have to live in the sin of bondage anymore. They can live free, that there is freedom through Jesus that is not found without him. God, we just praise you and thank you again. And I just pray for all my friends and their families, God. I just pray that you would bless them, that you would protect them and provide for them. And that if there's anyone among them that does not know Jesus as their Savior, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Excuse me. <laughs> I had to burp. <laughs> That's so embarrassing when you have to burp. Okay, well, have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow. It's Wednesday tomorrow, so I won't be here. I'll be at youth. I'll be sharing God's truths with the youth and the gospel of Jesus. And so I will be back Thursday and I think Friday um, and Saturday and Saturday. I don't think I have any plans this weekend. Oh, that's okay. Sometimes I like staying at home. It's easy. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. God bless you all and your families abundantly. Much love. <laughs> and cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.